Welcome to my 14th Zhangji checkmate method video and today we'll be looking at the heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate. The two features of the heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate are that first one of the cannons occupy the central file while the second occupies the back rank and the second feature is that we checkmate with another piece. So here's a first example of a heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate. It starts by having our cannon occupy that central file we just spoke of. Check. Green uh, <clears throat> blocks that check with his advisor here. We push our uh, soldier on the fourth file up one spot. If you notice, we're really just one step away from a checkmate here. Green moves his cannon over here to our back rank, checking our red general. And we defuse that threat by having our elephant come back here. Green now takes his rook on his ninth file and brings it back here. What he's doing is again, he's really just uh, <clears throat> trying to defuse what I had pointed out just a moment ago of, uh, of pushing his pawn up for a checkmate. We take uh, the cannon on our eighth file and put him back here in Green's back rank. This is the heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate formation. Green pulls his rook back here, defending this advisor. Once Green did this, Red had to sort of re, uh, redirect his uh, tactics to take this advisor, essentially trying to uh, initiate a, a throat cutting checkmate. Remember that's where we take out one of the uh, advisors here, check, green replies by capturing that soldier, we move our soldier here to uh, eventually try to capture that rook, and he can't do anything, right, he's pinned by our cannon here, that's one of the features of the heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate. It's a common tactic that when you're in sort of imminent uh, threat, you try to uh, flip the tables by uh, going on an attack yourself. So green comes down here, check. We move our general up one spot. Green pulls his cannon back one spot using our advisor as a catapult, check. We kick the catapult out from underneath him with our advisor. Green comes back here to check and pay attention. It's important that we move our general up to this corner. If we were to move him back, black can uh, really foil our checkmate plans. So we move here. Green moves his cannon here to the set uh, to our fourth file, threatening this pawn. But it's a temporary threat because we now capture that rook, and we get the checkmate. Here's our second example of the heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate. And in this case, we begin by bringing uh, the cannon in our second file back here. Check. Green diffuses that by moving his advisor in the way. We bring our second cannon over here to our center file. Check. Initiating the her, uh, heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate. And Green diffuses that threat with his other advisor. We take our rook 
and move them up two spots here. And uh, Green pulls his work back over here to uh, defend that advisor. We again initiate the throat cutting checkmate here by taking that advisor and essentially sacrificing our rook here. And green has no choice but to capture or to accept our sacrifice. See again, just like in that previous game, this uh, rook is now pinned by that cannon. We take our rook and bring him from the sixth bow to the fourth bow. What our, what our eventual goal here is to uh, come and attack here. So the general kind of anticipates that and moves over to his fourth file. We take our rook and come back here to capture this second advisor, check. And the general must move up a spot. We capitalize on that by capturing that rook back there. And like we saw in the other game, when um, when the, when one side is really um, up against the ropes, he goes on the attack himself. So check, but it's only really a temporary kind of a distraction, I guess, for lack of a better term. We move our advisor here, diffusing that threat. Green moves his elephant here. What he's doing is he's here, kind of diffusing that threat. Now this is no longer much of a threat here. We pull our, our uh, rook back one spot. Check. The green's general must retreat. And we capture green's second rook with our center cannon. And, uh, I mean, look around here. It's really going to be checkmate in a few moves. For red. Even though this isn't the complete checkmate, we can stop here and I hope you see that green's uh, essentially defeated here. Here's our third example of the heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate. In this case we'll start with moving our rook from the eighth to the fourth file. Check. The green general must retreat to his center file. We move our general here to this file, providing some assistance here to our rook. Green goes on the attack by checking, and we must move our general up one spot. Uh, green takes his horse out here. Remember, Green's horse isn't currently threatening our rook because in this case, his own soldier is uh, pinning his horse's legs down. This sets us up for the heavenly and earthly cannons checkmate. Green pulls his cannon back all the way to his back rank here, diffusing that. We go ahead and hop over that cannon to capture the elephant. Green puts his horse here in the way. What he's doing is he's providing a third piece in the way so that he could ideally, uh, in another in another move here, come and capture that. But it's uh, really, again, a little too late because we now move our rook all the way down to the back rank. Checkmate. 